my lovelies, and welcome back to this uh, little Fluff and Hammer adjacent podcast in which we, uh, well, I really just sit and natter about the stuff that's going on in the realms of Games Workshop and Warhammer and the like that vaguely interest me that we don't cover on the main podcast. I'm sure we will be doing with regards to this one, but I can't really contain my excitement because tomorrow is Slanishmas. Yes, tomorrow the Hedonites of Slanish get their second book, which was a massive surprise to me, I've got to say. I'm very surprised that there's a new battle tome this soon. I really am. Um, the last Heathenites book came out not terribly long ago at all. Not terribly long ago at all. And is still one of the more up-to-date battle tomes in the Age of Sigmar system. Um, I can see why they've done it. Because after Broken Realms Morathai, after the revelations of that system, uh, of that uh, book, there has been a kind of dynamic shift for the, the, the not only for the followers of Slanesh, but for Slanesh itself, the god it has been unleashed the god has been reborn i suppose has rebirthed itself and indeed unleashed it's now free it is not captive anymore in uh the realm of ulgish that sort of midway point between the realm of heish and ulgu the realms of light and shadow uh it's actually in the mortal realms now slanesh itself or at least like the child of Slanesh, which is a very interesting concept in and of itself, that seems to be like, I don't even know what it could be. It seems to be like a rebirth of Slanesh, as though Slanesh rebirthed itself. So this new version of Slanesh might be different. It might have some subtle differences from the original. Who knows? It's hard to say. I'm sincerely hoping that the new battle tome goes deep, deep, deep into this. I want to know what's going on. I want to know what the dynamic shift is. Um, how How is it working metaphysically, for example, having an, an actual chaos god in the mortal realms, you know, present in the mortal realms? It's kind of weird. It, like metaphysically it's very strange we adam and i have discussed this on the main show what is this going to mean for the balance of chaos for example the chaos powers are going to be thrown wildly out of balance by this um slanesh is almost certainly going to ascend back to the pantheon in which instance the horned rat who has sort of been occupying his place is almost certainly going to be kicked out of it or at least shunted aside so it's very, very weird on a metaphysical level, but very cool as well. It's also, I mean, it's changed the army significantly. The way they were organized before doesn't really make much sense now that Slanesh is free. So having like God Seekers doesn't necessarily make as much sense unless they rewrite them to dynamically change them. So that they're now not seeking Slanesh in the... Um, the sort of prison realm that the elves made for for it, they are now seeking the the rebirth, the um, the reborn Slanesh, which is still sort of putating. It's not quite finished yet. It certainly isn't at the end of Broken Realms Morathai. It's not quite there yet. It's not quite fully baked as it were. Um, but when it is, good God, who knows what it's going to mean for the mortal realms. I imagine the elven races are going to be absolutely shitting themselves because Slanesh Unleashed is bad news for them. Very, very bad. All of them. Every single one of them. It doesn't matter what loyalty they occupy, you know, whether it's the, the Brides of Cain, whether it's the Ideneth, whether it's the Lumineth, the, the Umbraneth, the Sylvaneth, it doesn't matter. They're all going to come under Slanesh's purview. And I imagine he's going to want to devour them all over again. You know? Uh, Morathai. Morathai is almost certainly going to be in his sights after this, you know? Um, just on a personal level, I, I, Slanesh is my favourite of the Chaos Powers. Uh, unambiguously. I've got a soft spot for most of them. Barring corn, corn, corn is fine. Corn, corn is just the least interesting to me personally because corn is so simple. You know, psychologically in terms of his aspects, in terms of his themes, he's very, very 
down the road simple, which is why he's appealing to a lot of people. I like the more complex ones. I like Slanesh. I like Nurgle. I like Zeech. Um, Slanesh in particular, because Slanesh emphasizes a lot of the elements of life and of conscious being that i myself extol that i really i find to be the most laudable and the most worthy of celebration so slanesh is born of uh excess slanesh is essentially um if you look at the historical and classically mythological influences upon this particular god he's dionysus he's bacchus he's um aphrodite he's all the gods of plenty excess pleasure celebration beauty love inspiration all of these things are bound up within slanesh and then ramped up to the nth degree so you've also got elements of lucifer in there and of mephistopheles and of very dark extreme powers as well because of course everything in slanesh's purview does become excess one of the most interesting things about slanesh in recent years is that they very subtly changed the god's dynamic it used to be the case way back when that he was a god of excess Uh, he was a god of desire primarily he was pain and pleasure you know he was those extremes of sensation but he was primarily a, a god of desire that has changed subtly uh, in recent incarnations so that now he's actually a god of excess in all things. And it makes him very interesting it, regarding his place amongst the other chaos powers. Because what it means is the others and the followers of the other chaos powers inadvertently empower him as much as they do the other the, the chaos gods that they serve because of course excess and obsession are part and parcel of all of the other chaos powers aspects it points out in the last hedonites book that the other chaos powers are actually kind of afraid of slanesh because they know that he has the capacity to overshadow them all he infests the realms and the uh, the arenas of the other chaos powers in ways that the others don't necessarily like um in the sense that he can he can manipulate their particular obsessions and the aspects that feed them and turn it to um to his benefit that's how he plays the great game amongst the chaos powers because of course he doesn't have the the influence or the raw power that many of the other chaos powers does like he's he's ranked usually he's ranked as the least of the great four um he's sort of behind nurgle in that regard although it is variable like at the very beginning of the mortal realms when he was swollen on the elven souls that he'd consumed during the end times he was the most powerful of the of the of the chaos powers. He actually overshadowed all of them. Um, it's interesting as well. I mean, I use the pronoun he for Slanesh, and that's because it is correct for me. Um, Slanesh is really interesting when it comes to pronouns and when it comes to, um, I suppose, gender identity in the sense that Slanesh always appears. He's very mutable. He appears as the perfect and most idealized uh, form, depending on whoever is regarding him. So for someone like me, a homosexual man, he would appear as male, as the idealized male form. Um, But he can appear as anything he wants. He can be male, female, any combination of the two, and also can appear as neither. He can appear as entities or as phenomena that are entirely apart from that spectrum um i use the pronoun he because that's what it would be for me but you can call it whatever you like it's an it it's they it's him it's her it's so many things all bound together but i like i like the aspects of slanesh for me is one of the most legitimately divine of the chaos powers um i like the fact that he represents pleasure i like the fact that he represents indulgence and enjoyment and things like excess in all things i mean the way slanesh has subtly shifted over the over recent years is that they've used the seven deadly sins to represent him so if you look at the circles of slanesh in in slanesh's realm slanesh's palace is surrounded by six concentric circles and each one of them is a realm in and of itself uh, and each one is dedicated to one of the seven deadly sins all of which are part of slanesh's purview what one of the things i love about slanesh worship is the fact that it begin it's all obvious why someone would want to worship slanesh you know and it's obvious how easily 
you could fall into Slanesh worship. However, it's not always necessarily the case that it's just like, you know, oh, it's just people who want, who just celebrate pleasure. It's not just libertines and cyberites who who fall into Slanesh worship. It can be quite subtle. So a lot of the people who end up in Slanesh cults, for example, in the civilized world, don't realize that that's what's happening initially. They become parts of artistic circles or of... of um, librarians where they discuss literature or um they become parts of um little fraternities that sample exotic kinds of food for example and slowly but surely that becomes more obsessive and more extreme and that's where slanesh starts to influence the minds and the the souls of those involved that's the way in that's that's the subtlety of it you can start with something very very innocent with slanesh and it slowly and insidiously swells and becomes more extreme uh, more overt until it takes you over that's what slanesh is slanesh is like addiction slanesh is like addiction it's like drug addiction you know when you eventually fall to Slanesh worship, and a lot of a lot of his followers, like like Zeech, they're not consciously followers of Slanesh. They just so happen to operate in certain ways or have fallen into obsessive lifestyles that happen to coincide with Slanesh's aspects, you know? Um, that's true for Zigfold, for example. Um, Zigfold the Magnificent, whose new model, by the way, ah, oh, I'm getting, oh my god, that is, you know, I never really liked the character before, it wasn't really, the model was fine, but it was not, never really my thing. The new model is magnificent. It is one of the best Slanesh miniatures ever, ever, ever conceived. It is stunning and yes i'm going to be pre-ordering him tomorrow alongside a lot of the other stuff i've got to say um but zigfold never started worshiping slanesh it's just the circumstances of his birth of his nature and of the path that he followed eventually led him down that down that route in fact a lot of slanesh's followers are so narcissistic and egocentric and so obsessive that they don't really care they're not like corn's followers corn's followers are ironically the the total opposite they are selfless in their worship to corn in fact they surrender all sense of ego and even of personality to the service of corn to the point whereby they're not just homicidal they're almost suicidal you know corn followers if there's no if there's no skulls to take if there's no offerings to give they will happily cut off their own heads or open their own veins in corn's name because that's what they are they're utterly utterly selfless whereas slanesh's followers are the complete opposite it's all about them it's all about their supremacy and their beauty and their pleasure and their satisfaction and their delight um and that's how it happens it seems to me with slanesh's followers and slowly and insidiously whatever whatever laudable or positive um drives they might have slowly erode until they just don't care anymore until they will do anything to satisfy the itch and they will engage in atrocities and horrors that they would have never considered before that they would have considered totally amoral or immoral before um and that's the thing with slanesh there's no morality at all no restriction in fact the very notions of morality and restriction are actually antithetical to slanesh worship and would ironically be considered to be um blasphemous you know that's the irony of it that's the irony of slanesh worship um what i love is they are really it seems that with this new book and this new incarnation of slanesh they're really leaning into this notion that slanesh is very complex it's not just narrow there is there has been this tendency in previous incarnations and certainly previous miniatures ranges to lean into only one aspect of slanesh and that is the it's um 
it's manifestation of the as the lord of pain and pleasure so it's really they've really just gone for like the bdsm elements they've gone for like the the, the sexualized elements of slanesh and yeah that is that is actually a big part of who slanesh is but it's not the only thing there are so many colors and aspects to slanesh you know there's aesthetic beauty there's art there's inspiration there's literature there's music music is a big part of slanesh um but there's also things like gluttony, for example. And we now have, of course, a character and a miniature that represents that aspect. We've got Glutus Esculion, who is brilliant, absolutely wonderful, a big, whacking centerpiece model who it who emphasizes the aspect of Slanesh as the Lord of Gluttony and the Lord of Overindulgence. So unlike the the normally lithe and quite sort of eroticized uh, miniatures and artwork that goes with Slanesh, this guy is big. He's big, he's mutated, he's altered, and his entire being is consumed with consumption. You know, he's being, he's sat on this massive mobile palanquin and he's being attended to by all of these hangers-on who are cooking him very strange and abstruse meals and feeding him bits and pieces. It is absolutely wonderful. This new miniatures range that's coming up the new mortals of slanesh are they've sold me i mean they are they are easily some of the best slanesh miniatures that have ever been released They're easily not only that but they emphasize aspects of slanesh that have never been emphasized before it was it was often the case that like the other chaos powers slanesh would kind of get lost in the muddle when you just had like the the slaves to darkness style army books where it was just all the chaos powers muddled together and the thing is with that it serves it serves none of the chaos powers particularly well in terms of their aesthetics their symbolism their iconography like your bog standard chaos warriors they work really well in that classic style slaves to darkness army but they do not work well when you're taking like a, an exclusive Slanesh army or an exclusive Nurgle army or an exclusive Zeech army. They don't look right. They don't feel right. They're too sort of down the line. They're too mainstream. Now we've got Slanesh specific Chaos Warrior archetypes. So you've got like the Painbringers, uh, what are they called? The Simbaresh Painbringers that are absolutely beautiful. They look like slanesh chaos warriors they've got all of the elaboration and the extrusions the spines and the the slanesh elements that have always existed in the artwork and in, in the descriptions but have never existed in the miniatures love it absolutely love it the the mortal miniatures range looks like it's going to be spectacular and i am phenomenally excited i'm phenomenally excited first of all the background you know i'm dying to find out like how slanesh mortal worship manifests in the mortal realms i'm imagining they're going to be a little bit more like the um the disciples of zeech i imagine they go unlike say the bloodbound of corn the, the 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 blades of corn unlike the maggot kin of nurgle they're going to operate more within civilization than most chaos forces do because of course slanesh is one of the most cultivated and civilized of the chaos powers um he gets on very well within the parameters of civilization in the same way that zeech does so that's really wonderful i'm sincerely hoping to see that how slanesh cults and followers operate within the the civilizations of the mortal realms and of course how they come together how they wage war all of that stuff i'm dying to see it i really am the aesthetics of the miniatures are beautiful they're absolutely beautiful they've really leaned into this thing of them being non-binary so if you look at the miniatures they could be male or female they could be intersex or they could be androgyne it's very difficult to tell and that's deliberate that's absolutely deliberate and that works very 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 well for the followers of slanesh because of course things like restrictions of gender of sex and of anatomy don't mean anything to followers of slanesh they're just parameters to be broken through you know um so that's what the miniatures emphasize there's also loads of 
cultural stuff bound into like cultural influences they've gone hard for this um 1001 arabian nights thing which of course is a heavily if, if you ever read those stories they are phenomenally erotic given that they're from the ancient world they are phenomenally erotic and very much apart from the literature that was pervading most of the christian dominated west at the time and they've gone for that with the aesthetics they've got this slightly arabic feeling to them which i love i absolutely adore they're very dynamic they've got lots of lots of like flowing silks and robes it's just wonderful i couldn't have asked for more really from the uh, a miniatures range dedicated to slanesh and let's face it guys it's something we've been aching for for bloody ages isn't it it really is Sl there was i mean there was even that period which i'm sure all of you uh, followers of the fluff and hammer remember when like adam and i were talking about the um the pervasive assumption that games workshop were going to be squatting slanesh we're going to be like allowing slanesh to fade into the background for one reason or another of course that isn't happening i mean we've got slanesh has been in the ascendant over the last couple of years and it looks like that's going to continue i mean they've gone hard with this miniatures range they really have i've i've seen people who are not interested in aos who are maybe more 40k players uh, I've seen people who are not that interested, haven't been interested in Slanesh up to this point, just throwing up their hands and going, God damn you, Games Workshop, you know, you have done it again. Just, just, you know what, just give me your bank details and I will link my bank account to yours. So all of my money just goes into Games Workshop's coffers because this, this is a, it's one of those miniatures ranges that looks like it's going to be another step up. It looks like it's going to be one of those miniatures ranges that kind of changes the state of play a little bit um they are beautiful the mortal followers of slanesh are absolutely astounding and they flipped me i mean i am more of a 40k player i like the background of 40k i like that science fiction grim dark thing that's going on but i'm telling you i'm going hard for these guys i am uh, i should rephrase that shouldn't i given that this is slanesh i should absolutely rephrase that yeah slanesh is a chaos card i could really get behind and it just goes on it just goes on no um yeah these i, I am getting a box of, e of everything if there's a big box set on pre-order tomorrow that's got everything with it i'm having that i am absolutely having that i can tell you because it's 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 what i've been waiting for it really is my only hope is that it carries over I want it to carry over into 40k, you know. We've be, we've had suggestions and hints of a Slanesh range coming at some point, and they've got to do it. God damn, they've got to do it in 40k. Where are our Emperor's children? Where's Fulgrim? Where are our new noise marines? God damn it. Where are our noise marines, you know? It's got to be done. And the advent of Ninth Ed is, of course, a perfect excuse to do it. As we discussed on the last Fluffenhammer when we were talking about the Death Guard, I've no doubt that the Emperor's Children will not feature in the core Chaos Space Marine Codex this time. I don't think they're even going to be a supplement for it. I think they're going to be their own codex. I, oh, fingers crossed. They, oh, come on, guys. Noise Marines, Slanesh-specific Terminators, the, the Phoenix Guard. Come on. Give us a, a new Lucius the Eternal come on maybe even eidolon you know maybe we could have a miniature of eidolon at last come on we've got we've got to have this we've got to have an empress children codex at some point it would be a waste not to it would be a total waste not to especially since aos has got so much beautiful stuff for slanesh out there now anywho yeah i'm just rampantly excited for this one i really am i, I cannot wait i'm, I'm gonna be like um I'm just going to be on tenterhooks tomorrow. Just pre-order, pre-order everything. Click, click, click. I just, I cannot wait. Cannot wait, my loves. Ah, mm, and I, I suppose when we come back next time, we're going to be having a good old look at the uh, the new Hedonites of Slanesh. So until then, my dears, bye-bye.